It's TK Friday, and today in the joy of editing, it's another full edit. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. It's TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, and today I have another Iceland image from Asif Masood. He sent me some really cool images, and I couldn't resist doing this one today. Now, as always, you can download the image and the PDF notes and give this edit a try. If you don't have TK9 or the latest version of TK9, TK9 version 3, I highly recommend that you pick it up. The launch sale is almost over. It ends on October 25th. And don't forget, use my promo code D. DK25, you'll save 25% off your entire purchase. That includes training videos, the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. And don't forget to check out Sean Bagshaw's two new luminosity courses, one for basic and one for advanced. I highly recommend them. And you can save 25% off. Again, use my promo code DK25. You'll save that 25% off. And also when you use that code, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I make a small commission when you use it. And when you do that, I really appreciate it. And I thank you. Let's go ahead and get started. By the way, if you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, go to the description of the video, click on more to open it up, scroll down to the bottom. There's a contact me link, contact me, and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. As always, I start out here in Lightroom, do some basic adjustments. I want a relatively flat image going into Photoshop, and that's where I develop this image using the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Now, I always like to start out with a linear profile. I'm not always but most of the time it gives me a nice flat image and I always give it a little bit of sharpening and as far as lens corrections I always like to check on remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections and I did a bit of a crop on this image as you can see and that is basically it now when you download the image it will look just like this and then at this point I just right click on the image go to edit in edit in Photoshop 2025 and here we are inside of Photoshop 2025. Now, the first thing I always like to do in my edits is do a balance and contrast on the entire image. I do a separate one for foreground and sky. And a new feature of TK9 version 3 is the ability to record Photoshop actions using TK9 button clicks, which is really great. And it really can speed up your workflow. And I will use one of those actions right now, and that is the B and C landscape action, standing for balance and contrast landscape. The B and C landscape action is an action you all got when you downloaded TK9 version 3. You'll find them in the download folder that came with TK9 version 3. Open up documents and resources, open up TK9 example actions, and you'll find the actions in here. There's also actions for non-English versions of Photoshop actions. Don't place these actions in the My Actions panels or they won't work. This is a Photoshop problem, not a TK9 problem. That could change in the near future. They can only run from Photoshop actions. The only reason I mention this is because there's been some folks having some issues getting the actions to work. And hopefully this will help. When you download the PDF notes, there's a footnote showing you how to do this a long way if you don't have TK9 version 3. But we're going to use the action and do it with one click. Well, let's go ahead and do this that now here are my photoshop actions i have them set up in button mode if you click the fly out menu if i uncheck button mode your action would look like this you would just click on bnc landscape and click play but i recommend that you use button mode this way you can do it all with just one simple click i'll click on bnc landscape for balance and contrast landscape and you'll note i have a foreground and a sky layer with a color grading tool for each layer and i have a midtones 3 mask on each one of these layers to protect shadows and highlights from getting clipped and now we can make some adjustments here we'll start out with foreground i'll start by clicking on the shadow button we're going to go ahead and darken up the shadows i'm going to drag the brightness slider to the left and we'll take it over to right there minus 37 and i just want to add a little bit of blue to those shadows so we're going to color grade them so i'm going to click like right here just adds a little bit of blue to the shadows and now we're going to click on the midtone button and let's lighten up the midtones a little bit i'm going to drag this brightness slider to the right and we'll take it to right there 14. Let me shut this layer off. Here's before 
and here is after. And now we'll click on the sky layer and we'll start out with midtone. So I'll click on the midtone button and I just want to darken up the midtones a little bit over to right there, a minus 13. I want to give them a little bit of a color grade. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of blue. I'm going to click right here. And now let's work in highlights. I'll click on the highlight button and I just want to pull back in the highlights and I think I'll go right there, a minus 37. I'll click my before after button. We started out here and now we end up here. So we're off to a really good start. The next thing I usually like to try after balance and contrast is a mid-tone contrast adjustment. So I'm going to click X on the color grading tool so I can get to my multi-mask panel. Nothing changes on these layers over here. And then we'll come to the multi-mask panel. I'll click on the luminosity mask button. And I want to use the subtlest of the mid-tones and that is mid-tones one. I don't want a really strong contrast effect in mid-tones. So I'll click on mid-tones one. Well, I'll put this to a curves adjustment layer and then simply come to the presets for the curves adjustment. Click the drop down, click on strong contrast. And now let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after just a nice little bit of mid-tone contrast. Very subtle, but it's very effective. Usually after you do a mid-tone contrast adjustment, your mid-tones get a little dark. I like to follow that up with a mid-tone lightning. So what we'll do is come back to the multi-mask panel, click on the luminosity mask button. We'll click on mid-tones one again. I'll put it to another curves adjustment, but this time we'll click the screen button just to lighten up the mid-tones. Now the sky's getting too light. So what we can do is come to the combo or CX panel, click on the layer mask calculator, click on sky, and we'll click the minus to subtract it out. And now let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Now we're just lightening up the foreground in the midtones. Now for the next adjustment, I'm using a new feature in TK9 version 3, and that is the ability to adjust zones 1 to 5 of the image. In other words, the darker tones up to the very light tones. And to do that, hold your shift key down and you can click on curves, levels, or brightness contrast. I'm going to use curves. So I'm holding shift, I'm clicking on curves and notice we have a group called adjust with zones and we have five curves adjustments starting with zone one up to zone five zone one is active now zone one would be your darker tones they progressively get lighter as you go up to zone five now that works for curves it works for levels and brightness just hold your shift key down and click on any of these three buttons and you'll get adjust with zones with that adjustment you chose. Now with your curves adjustment, I could click right here and drag down or I could use the picker tool if I wanted to, but I'm just going to click here and drag down. Those darker tones start getting darker when I drag this down. Pretty cool, right? And then I can move on to zone two, which is still darker tones and maybe darken some of those tones down a little bit. And then I could go to zone three, which is right around mid-tones, and maybe give it a little bit of a mid-tone contrast like so. And then I could go to zone four, see if I can make an adjustment here in zone five. Now you don't have to make an adjustment in each zone. If you have a zone where you didn't use an adjustment, you could just go to that layer and click your trash can button and delete it. So you could just use the zones you want. I ended up using all five zones. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this accordingly to my notes, and I'll get back and show you my results. And I am back. I have all these zones shut off right now. Let me turn on zone one by clicking right here. Okay, see the darkening of some of the darker tones in zone one? I'll shut this off again. This is before, this is after. And you can see I just pulled down on the curve right here. And now let's go to zone two. Let's turn it on. Again, these are darker tones. Here it is turned on. I just darkened up some of the darker tones here. And you can see I just pulled this curve down just a little bit for zone two. And now we're going to go to zone three. This is more of a mid-tone. And you can see I did a slight, very slight little mid-tone contrast curve here. Let me go ahead and turn it on. So just a little bit of contrast in the mid-tones. You see that? Now, I don't want it in the sky, so I can come and click on the layer mask calculator calculator, click sky, click minus, and we'll subtract that out of the sky. Here's before and here's after. It's only on the foreground. And now let's go to zone four. And this is a lighter zone. It's off right now. Let me turn it on. And you can see a little bit of lightning right there. Now, I don't like it in the sky. So again, what I'll do is click on the layer mask calculator, click sky, click minus to subtract out the sky. Now let me shut this off. Here's before 
and here's after. Just a little bit of uh, zone four lightning in the foreground. And now let me show you the adjustment for zone five. You see this highlight in the cloud? It's really too light and it really bothers me. So let me turn this on. And now notice this curve right here. See, I just took the highlight end of the curve and pulled it down. So watch that cloud. Here is before and here's after. Isn't that nice? And now if I shut off the entire group, we started out here and we end up here with adjust with zone. So it's a pretty powerful adjustment and I highly recommend that you give it a try on your images. For now, I'm going to go ahead and click right here on the group just to collapse it to give us a little more space in the layer stack. Now, as I study the image, the next thing I want to do, see these rocks right in here, this road coming down through here, and some of these rocks here in the right-hand side of the foreground. I want to tone those down, and I want to do some freehand burning. So we're going to come to the Combo or CX panel, click the right side of the burn tool. That gives us a blank pixel layer with a soft light blend mode. And I want a brush opacity of 10%. Right now I'm at 100%. I'm going to type my one key. That's the shortcut for 10%. And what I want to do is we're just going to start to paint some freehand burning on some of these light rocks in here. On the darker areas, I may darken them up a little bit more just to add some depth and dimension into these. And I'll come over in here, make my brush smaller. I'm using a soft edge brush. Now, when you paint over it once, you add the effect. And then when you paint over it again, you build up that effect. So I'm just going to come in here. And that really nice soft edge brush is going to help us a lot. So you see what I'm doing here. And then I'll come over to the road and make my brush a little bigger and darken up this road. I'll finish this off and I'll get back to you and show you my final result. I'm back. Let me show you the result. Right now, the burn layer is shut off. Again, this is all freehand. Let me turn it on. So it looks like this now. Again, here's the before and here's the after. Now, if you went too strong, you can always pull back on the layer opacity. And if you need to erase an area where you overshot, you can switch over to the eraser tool. The shortcut for the eraser tool is E. With it at 100% opacity, you'll fully erase, but then you could lower the opacity values to do some blending if needed. And now as I study this image, I'm looking at these reflected clouds in the water, the highlights. I think they're too light drawing the viewer's eye. So let's go ahead and darken them up. We'll do a little bit of burning. I'm not going to freehand this time, but I think a zone mask will help us target these areas. So we're going to come up to the multi mask panel and click on the zone mask button and let's click some of the light tones in the water like right here we're going to click OK and now let's go ahead and tighten up that selection we'll take this slider and drag it into the left a little bit over to right about here and now there's a new feature in TK9 version 3 and that is the auto levels adjustment I'm not even going to touch the brightness slider I'm just going to double click this and that gives us pure white to pure black, giving us a stronger selection. If you just click on this button, you'll go into levels and you can make your own adjustment. But if you double click it, you will get that auto levels adjustment. And now we need to output this. I'm going to click on the right side of the burn tool. That gives us a blank pixel layer in the soft light blend mode with a black brush. And I want a brush opacity of like 10%, which I do. If you don't have 10%, type your one key. And then what we want to do is just paint over these light areas. And you might have to paint over them a couple times to build up the effect and just tone down some of these lighter areas like here and remember the zone mask is targeting just the tones that you want pretty cool right and that just tones those down a little bit and now let me shut this off here is before and here's after now if you want too strong remember you can always take the opacity and pull it off and you know lessen the effect that you have. But I think I'll leave it up at 100%. And now at this point, I'd like to do a little bit of darkening of some of the darker tones in this mountain right here. I think that'll look really good. And to do that, I think I'll use another zone mask. So what we'll do is come up to the multi mask panel and click on the zone mask button. The color picker comes up and you know what? I'm gonna sample this tone right here and click OK. And now let's refine it a little bit. We'll take this Titan slider and drag it into the left a little bit and I think I'll take it over to like right about here to really refine it and now let's do that double click auto to do an auto levels again and now we'll output that to a burn tool I'm going to use the right side of the burn tool again so I'll click on the right side you could use the right or left it doesn't really matter I'm using the right and that gives us a transparent pixel layer in the soft light blend mode and I want to use another brush opacity of 10% and I'm already there again type your one key if you're not at 10% and now we'll 
with a soft edge, small brush, just start painting over the darker areas. The zone mask will just target what you need. I'll get this started. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing, but I'm just looking for darker tones like this. And we'll just keep painting away. And then, as I said, I'm going to pause the video and I'll get back and show you my final result. Before I show you that final result, I just want to show you, see this light area right here? In my notes, I tell you to click this button to deselect because that zone mask will not let us get these light areas right in here. Some of this light area right in here, I ended up with that 10% brush toning that down a little bit so that doesn't look as strong right in this area. I just wanted to tone it down a little bit, so I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to pause the video now, I'll finish the burning, and I'll get right back to you. And I am back. And now, this is before, so look at this mountain right here. And now let me turn this layer on. Here is after. But you see right here, this is the area I was talking about. I deselected my selection, and with that 10% brush, just toned this down. Without the zone selection, I was able to tone down the lighter areas. I was also painting close to the edge of the mountain up here and I overshot a little bit. So what I did there was, what do you think? Well, if you're thinking that layer mask calculator, Dave, you're right. Click on the layer mask calculator, click sky and click minus and you'll subtract out the sky. And again, here's before and here is after. Now, when I look at this area of the mountain, see some of these lighter streaks coming off this mountain here. I'd like to dodge those bring them out a little bit, not too much. And to do that, we'll come to the Combo or CX panel, click on the right side of the Dodge tool, gives us a blank pixel layer in the overlay blend mode. And then I'm gonna use Edit Blend Diff to help me. So I'm gonna click on the Edit Blend Diff button and I'm gonna click on Lights 1, just to target lights. And now with a nice soft edge brush at 10% opacity, I'm at 10%, if you're not, type your one key, that's the shortcut, remember. And then some of these lighter areas, we're just going to paint on them like so. And Blend If is targeting just those light areas. And I don't want to go too crazy here. I'm just going to go down them like one time, maybe over in here a little bit over here, maybe right in here, up into here. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to come over here and just lighten up this area of this mountain just a little wee bit, just like that. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here is before... And here is after. Now, if it's too strong, we could take the opacity and maybe pull it off a little bit. And I think I'll do that. I think I'll take it down to maybe 80%. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But just a nice little lightning there, and I think it helps. We're getting near the end, but I think we need a vignette. I'm just going to use a basic vignette. If your TK actions aren't open, click your TK button on either the combo or CX panel. Click your vignette button. The Gaussian blur dialog comes up. I just always click OK. I would like to protect the vignette from hitting the darkest dark tones. So what we can do is use Blend Diff to help us. And right now my Edit Blend Diff panel is open. If yours isn't open, just click the Edit Blend Diff button again and click on No Darks 1. And that keeps it out of the darkest dark sound. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after and I like it. Now the default layer opacity for the vignette is 30%, which I think is good here. You know, you could lower it or increase it, whatever your needs are. But I think I like it. Let me shut this vignette off. Here's before and here's after. I would also like to close off the top of the sky. I think that'll look really good. So let's do that next. I'm going to go ahead and close the Edit Blend Diff panel by clicking the X just to tidy things up a bit. Now we're going to close off the top of the image, but I'm going to use another new feature in TK9 version 3 to help us here. If you hold your Shift key down and click on Soft Light, Overlay, Screen, or Multiply Blend Mode buttons in either the Combo or CX panel, you will get a Blend Mode brush. For instance, right now, if I click on Multiply while holding Shift, you notice it says multiply brush. Basically what it is, it's a curves adjustment layer for all four of these blend modes I just mentioned, a curves adjustment layer in that blend mode with a black hide all mask. Now in the case of a multiply brush, right now I have 50% brush opacity. I could do things like just darken areas by painting on them with the multiply brush. You see that? I'm just gonna hit this button and undo what I just did. But I'm gonna use this for another reason 
because remember, I want to close off the top of the image, and this sets us up perfectly for the gradient tool. We want to multiply blend mode with a black hide all mask, and that's what we have. And now I need my gradient tool, so I'll click on my gradient tool. Make sure you click on linear gradient. Make sure you have reverse checked on. Make sure you're using the new live gradient, not the classic gradient. And then click the drop down and open up your basics folder and click on this swatch right here. And now all we need to do is click here. If you hold down your shift key while dragging, you can constrain this to lock on various angles or just straight. And I'm just going to drag it down to like right about here. Now we have this diamond adjustment. We can adjust how this looks like that. And I think right there is good. Now, if I come over here and if I don't want to see this line, if I click on the curves icon like this, that line will go away. If I click on the mask, it'll come back. So I'm going to click on the curves icon. And now what I want to do is just lower the opacity. So I'm going to come here and take that opacity down to like 80%. Now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. See how that just really nicely closes off the top. But you know what? I think it's going into this mountain a little bit. Let me shut this off. Do you see it? It's slightly darkening the top of this mountain here. So here's what we can do. Click on your layer mask calculator. Click on foreground and click minus to subtract it. I'll shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after. That's much better. Now we can look at this layer mask. Click the double arrow button on the Combo CX panel and you can see that mountain is removed right there. Click this button again to go back to the image. Couple more steps and we are done. This area rocks from here down to here. Looks a little bit too light. So I'll show you how we can fix this. Let's go and grab our object selection tool. I'm going to click this button and I'm in the lasso mode. Sample all layers is checked. And then I'll just lasso around these rocks and I'll get as many as I can. It's missed this one so I'll hold the shift key down and I will just lasso right around here like that. I also want to include these rocks so I'll hold the shift key down. That just adds it to the selection and I think I'll hold the shift key down and grab this rock too. I think this one's okay over here. I'll use a color grading tool to make the adjustment because I think I want to color grade these rocks. So I'll click on the color grading tool button and you'll notice that mask is added to the color grading tool and now what I want to do is click on the midtone button, darken up those rocks a little bit and I think I'll take them over to minus 17 and now I want to give them a little warm color grade so you see my cursor right here I'm going to drop a puck like right about here see how that just warms them up a bit now let me shut this off here's before and now here is after and I think that looks much better we're not drawn to those rocks as much now for the final step I just want to add a little detail to the foreground to do that I'll use another new feature in TK9 and that is the cam raw button it's changed a little bit it's now called cam raw when you click it it will stamp all your layers together turn it into a smart object and launch the camera raw filter so let me do that I'm going to click camera and now here we are inside the camera raw filter. So what I want to do is click on effects and just give it a little bit of texture. I'm going to take this up to plus 20 and I'm going to take the clarity over to plus 10 and click OK. And now here we are back in Photoshop. Now I'm going to shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. It's just minimal, but I don't want it in the sky. So what we can do is click on the layer mask calculator click on sky click minus to subtract out the sky now I'll shut off the layer here's before and here is after and that is it now let's see where we started from i'm going to come to my combo panel click on the before after button we started out here and now we end up here so i'm really happy with the way this edit turned out and i do hope you download the image and the pdf notes and give the edit a try well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you enjoyed today's full edit tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.